Hey, hey, hey guys, hope all is well. It's your boy, Mark. I haven't done an update in a while, but this is, these two videos that I'm gonna about to post today are probably two of the most important ones for current market conditions. When I'm taping this, it is May 27th, 2021. And guys, I've been doing real estate now for about 17 years, uh, owned my own company for the last six years, and opened my own brokerage firm back at the end of 2019. And all these years of experience, and I've lived here now for 22 years, I'm entering my 22nd year, hard to believe, in greater Atlanta. I've never seen a market quite like this. And one of my missions and why I created Great Homes ATL along with Kurt is to educate you, to promote home ownership, and to get you uh, a home for you to take advantage of what is going on, which is right now a seller's market. What does that mean? Does that scare people off to mean like, does that mean if I'm a buyer, I shouldn't be a part of this? Or what does that really mean? What it really truly means, guys, is it's, let's go back to um, economics 101, supply and demand. The demand is super high and the supply is super low. And there's gonna be many factors and I wanna to try to get as much as I can into this 15 minute video because that's all Instagram and YouTube allow right now for Instagram TV and YouTube. So I wanna get this through two videos. You have Atlanta being recognized now as a true international city. Um, we're starting to get international investors in here now. Um, when you look at the big macroeconomics of the country and the world, Atlanta is super cheap compared to a New York, an LA, a Miami, uh, established real estate areas, overseas, London, Paris, uh, Sydney, Australia, like all very strong real estate markets. Atlanta is now being recognized as an international city. You've got people for economic reasons, job reasons, political reasons, socioeconomic, um, historical reasons, people coming back to uh, the South that, you know, have migrated to New York and LA and all these other larger cities are now coming back home and job opportunities and tax rates compared to other areas. So you have influx. Since when I moved here in 1999, like there are millions, not like tens of thousands, millions of people that have moved here and hundreds and tens of thousands within the last couple of years. And it's forecast to continue to grow. So anybody that tells you, is this just a blip or, you know, oh, I remember 10 years ago, that same house that cost 450,000 would have cost 250,000. You guys were not living in the past. What did I just tell you about what is happening to Atlanta. It's becoming a international, multicultural, political, so, social, economical environment where people want to retire, where they want to start a family, where they want to transfer for a job. Um, it's an international city where you could jump on a plane and get to New York in an hour and a half, or get to Miami in an hour, hour, 15 minutes, whatever the case may be. And um, Georgia itself is a pretty big state. So if you want to go to Savannah and be on the coast, but everybody truly, for the most part, obviously loves greater Atlanta. And so do I. And that's why we are Great Homes ATL. It's a great place to, to live and raise a family. So let's jump into what's happening in this market with the resales. So maybe about even a year, year and a half ago, you know, we'd have a relocation buyer that was relocating from New York. Said, hey, Mark and Kurt, I'm gonna be down in a couple of weeks. Um, they would, you know, look at a site like Zillow and look at our website, because our website, Great Homes ATL, is linked to the FMLS and MLS, and you can see homes that are newly listed, and you'd have brokers um, advertise an open house, you know, maybe, eight, 10 days after a house is listed and they might send out information to other agents, a house just listed and 
bring a well-qualified buyer and let's just say a house was listed at 350,000 relatively good area um you know you'd feel pretty good as a buyer and an agent uh if you put in a, a full price offer maybe even just a little bit over uh and sometimes in a market maybe a, you know if the house needed just a little bit of work maybe you you know we could negotiate something off the price um if you needed down payment assistance or help with closing costs those were all kind of negotiable items you know you might be able to get that three hundred fifty thousand dollar house for 350 and you'd have a seller maybe pay eight nine thousand dollars towards your closing cost or give you a home warranty or say you know i can give you five or ten thousand dollars off the price well when things shift and it's a seller's market What's happening is that same $350,000 house is getting listed, say, on a Monday. Because there is so much demand, because interest rates are in the twos and the threes, because people are getting back to work, because people are feeling good, right? Vaccinations going on, things opening up again, um, people coming from other parts of the world, um, Asia, Europe, to Atlanta, you've got investors coming uh, from all over the world. You've got people relocating, like I said, from a city like a New York or LA or Miami where uh, this five bedroom house within 45 minutes of Atlanta, or in their case, New York or LA, cost them 1.5 or 2.5 million in those areas is priced at 350 or 550 or 750 and all those scenarios an unbelievable deal to anybody that's relocating from those areas so what's happening is that house gets listed let's say again 350 on a monday when you used to be able to hey i'm coming to town on thursday or friday to look at houses you know an agent like myself would schedule it on that monday and say okay let's go take a look you know, when you come to town on Thursday and let's take a couple that we can look at. What's happening, guys, that house gets listed. It goes out to Zillow. It goes out to Realtor. It goes out to all the MLS. It's on the World Wide Web. The demand is here. People in the greater Atlanta area are are, are ready to buy a home as well. Not just, obviously, resale. I mean, um, relocation buyers. And that house gets listed for three fifty on Monday. We know because we have had multiple listings ourselves in this market. As soon as we list it, we wake up the next morning, request for 25 showings that day. The next day, 40 more showings. The next day, 30 more showings. By the end, by like Thursday or Friday of a Monday listing, you had well over like 80 to 150 showings and you check your inbox and you have 15, 25, 35, 40 offers on this house that was priced at 350. Again, because everybody that has a good agent, everybody that knows what's going on, everybody that wants to be, wants that house so bad, wants to be in a certain school district, wants to be around certain economic development, wants a nice piece of land, whatever that house offers you those days of asking for closing costs or uh, something off the price of the home guys it's not even coming in at the ask price what's happening now is people are going 15 30 60 I've had a client offer $75,000 over the ask price so what happens in that situation and how can you prepare uh, for that scenario as a home buyer? Number one, you're the strongest position if you come with cash. And you might say to yourself, well, wait, so if somebody says 350, and you're saying somebody's offering 400,000? Yes. Again, why? Because it's in a good area. It has the right floor plan. Um, it's within an hour of Atlanta. And it's a hot real estate market. Well, where are people coming up with 400,000? People 
come into money from uh, debts in a family, estate, you know, situations, selling of real estate, crypto market, uh, selling of stocks, 401ks, whatever the case may be, guys. And, you know, if you're competing with somebody that, you know, had lived in California for many years or New York and had accumulated quite a bit of money when they pay down their principal, they are now in a power position because they are sitting on a half a million, a million dollars worth of cash to now buy in the Atlanta market. They don't even flinch twice about dropping 400000 on a $350,000 house. So that's number one. That's very, very hard to compete with. But we're seeing more of that. Number two, the mortgage buyer. This is why we stress, and we've always stressed even well before. That's why I did credit videos, down payment, closing costs, cash to close. And what have I always said and what have we always said in all these videos? You must be pre-approved to want to work with us. We didn't just say that because we know that it's definitely a waste of our time if you're not, but it's a waste of your time because if you don't know your numbers, you have no chance and you have no chance in this environment. So you have to go to that lender and we have referrals for you if you need it. We already have a much more streamlined process. We meet on a Zoom call, all kinds of stuff. It's now all spelled out on every post that we, we do. But you have to know, did you get pre-approved for 350? Are you now pre-approved for 400? Are you 450? So what's happening now, if you say no, you're pre-approved for 350, then you shouldn't even be looking at houses that are 340, 345, 350, and anything above that, forget about it. So if you're pre-approved for 400, you should be looking at houses 320, 350, 370, so that you can bid up in your bid situation if it's a house that you really want. So let's talk about what happens in that situation. The next, after the cash buyer, from a mortgage perspective, from a seller's perspective, a strong buyer is considered a conventional loan buyer, then an FHA, then a VA. There's nothing, absolutely nothing wrong with FHA and VA. VA is probably the best of all the loans out there because you don't have to pay PMI and most cases you don't have to pay down payment. But what happens is a house has to get appraised. When it's a cash buyer and they waive their appraisal, no matter what, they're going to pay that 400000 But what happens if you're using a mortgage to buy a house, putting 3% down, 3.5% down, 20% down, whatever the case may be? You have contingencies. You have a due diligence period when you have the right to change your mind or inspect the property. You have a financial contingency where you could get fully approved within a certain period of time uh, going through the underwriting process and then you have an appraisal. And what happens with the appraisal is if the property doesn't appraise, say that house at 350, somebody offered 400 with a VA loan or an FHA loan or even a conventional loan, their appraisers are very conservative. So if that house doesn't appraise at 400, the seller then has to either lower the price, say it appraised at 350, they're taking $50,000 off the table. So what is happening, guys, is people are waiving their appraisal contingencies, where if it appraises at 350, they're gonna come out of pocket that extra 50,000 or they're putting in there a shortfall appraisal. They say, well, I can't make up the difference between 400 and 350, but if it appraises at 375, I will do a $25,000 appraisal shortfall to make up that difference. So you are now competing with cash buyers, people waiving their appraisals, appraisals or people doing shortfall appraisal contingencies. Um, in the next video, I wanna talk a little bit more about this because uh, I couldn't fit it in in this whole 15 minutes. So I think this is a super important topic. And then I'll also do, uh, so it'll be part two of resale. And then we'll try to do a part one and possibly a part two of new homes. Because that's a whole nother topic. All right, stay tuned.